In today's tutorial, I'm going to tell you most of the things you need to know about quadratic equation and how to solve quadratic equation via factorization. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, press the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever I upload new content. Basically, the general form of a quadratic equation is written as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, for which a is never equal to zero, but b and c can be equal to zero. So we say a quadratic equation is a polynomial equation of degree two. The highest degree for a quadratic equation is two. Why a is never equal to zero is, is because if a equal to zero, the whole of this term will vanish, leaving a linear equation. So why do we always have zero to the right hand side? It is not necessary that we must have zero, but no matter what number is here, say 20, once you subtract 20 from that side, you'll be left with zero. And we have another constant here, which we have to subtract 20 from. So we have C minus 20, and the whole of this remain constant, which can be written as C. So, so we call it quadratic because the highest degree is two, and it is an equation because of the equality sign. Since B and C can appear to be equal to zero, we may have a quadratic equation in the form of AX squared equals to zero. We may have AX squared plus BX equal to zero, or we may have AX squared plus BX plus C equal to zero. So this is called a quadratic monomial. This is a quadratic binomial. And this is quadratic trinomial. Now let us see how we can solve quadratic equations by factorization. Suppose we have x squared equals to four. We want to solve this by factorization. You know that we can subtract four from both sides so that we have x squared minus four. And to the other side, we have zero since we have subtracted four from that side. And this can also be written as x squared minus two squared because two squared is equal to four, which are difference of two squares. And if you have difference of two squares, you can factorize them as x minus two, then x plus two. And the whole of them equal to zero, where we have two factors multiplying each other and the result is zero. So on what condition Will you multiply two numbers to get zero? Suppose we have A multiplying B and the result is zero. This implies that either A or B is equal to zero for this equation to be true. Because if A is zero, we have zero times B equal to zero. And if B is zero, we have A multiplying zero as equal to zero. But since we don't know among these two factors which one is zero, we may say A can be equal to zero or B equal to zero. And the same principle is applicable here. Since we don't know which among these two factors is zero, so we are going to set each one of them to be equal to zero. If you set X minus two equals to zero, this implies that for this equation to be true, x must be equal to two because two minus two is equal to zero. This implies that x is equal to two. And for the second one, which is x plus two equal to zero, this implies that x must be equal to negative two for this equation to be true because negative two plus two is zero. So hence, the two real values of this equation are positive two and negative two. So what about if A is not one? Because if you can see here, the leading coefficient, which is A, remember the general form is x, AX squared plus BX plus C equals to zero. Uh, the coefficient of X squared is always A. In this equation, you can see that A is equal to one. This is why we don't have any number attached to X squared. Suppose you have two X squared equals to 32. Here the leading coefficient is equal to two. 
to get rid of this two you can divide both side by two so we do divide both side by two which two cancel two leaving x squared equals to 16 because 32 divided by 2 is 16 and this can be written as 4 squared because 4 squared is 16 if you bring it towards the left side we have x squared minus 4 squared equals to 0 and also we have difference of 2 squares which can be written as x minus 4 multiplied by x plus 4 and the whole of them equal to 0 to get the roots of this quadratic equation, which is the solution for the quadratic equation, we are going to set each of these factors to be equal to zero. The first factor, x minus four equals to zero. This implies that x is equal to four for this equation to be true. And for the second factor, x plus four equal to zero. This implies that x is equal to negative four because negative four plus four is zero. Hence, we say the real solution for this quadratic equation are 4 and negative 4. Now, let us look on to quadratic binomial where we have two terms. Suppose we have x squared minus x equal to 0. If you can see, both terms have x in common, which you can factor one of the x out. And inside from the first term, we have only x left. And here, since we have factored x out, we are left with 1 and this is equal to zero. Hence, we have two factors multiplying each other. We are going to set each one of them to be zero. The first one is x equal to zero, or x minus one equal to zero, which implies that x is equal to positive one. Hence, x is either equal to zero, or x equal to positive one, for this equation to be true. Now let us look on to another form in which the leading coefficient is not equal to 1. Suppose we have 3x squared plus 6x equal to 0. To factorize this expression, we are going to compare the two numbers and look at their highest common factor, which among them we have 3, because 3 can go into 3 as well as 6. Then we look upon the x's. For here, they have x in common, so we have 3x out. From the first term, we have only x. And from the second term, we have only 2 left, because 6x divided by 3x is equal to 2. And all of this equal to 0. We are going to set each of these factors to be equal to 0. The first factor is 3x equal to 0. By dividing both sides by 3, still x cancel x, x equal to 0 divided by 3, which is still 0. Or the second factor, which is x plus 2 equals to 0. This implies that x is equal to negative 2. Hence, these are our solutions, x equal to 0 or x equal to negative 2. So now let us look on to how to factorize quadratic trinomials. This time around, we have three times instead of 2 or 1. The simplest way to factorize an expression in this form where the leading coefficient is 1 is to have two brackets first, and each one of them is equal to 0. We have x here, we have x here. What we are going to think of, uh, we are going to think of two factors of negative 6, which when you add them together, you get positive 1, which is the coefficient of the middle term, which is x. So let us first of all list out the factors of negative 6. We have negative 1 multiplied by 6 will give us negative 6. And we have positive 1 multiplied by negative 6 will still give us negative 6. We may have negative 2 multiplied by positive 3. Still it will give us negative 6. And we may have a positive 2 multiplying a negative 3. All these set of numbers, if you multiply them together, you get negative 6. So you are going to decide which groove among these four grooves that if you add them together, you are going to get a positive 1, which is the coefficient of the middle term. And if you can see this groove, negative 2, if you add it to positive 3, it will give us uh, positive 1. 
So these are the numbers we are going to use. We have negative 2 and positive 3. Hence, we have two factors of this quadratic equation. We are going to set each one of them to be equal to 0. The first one is x minus 2 equals to 0. This implies that x is equal to positive 2. Or x plus 3 equal to 0. This implies that x is equal to negative 3 if you take 3 to the other side. This is how to solve a quadratic trinomial in which the leading coefficient is 1. Now let us look on to another form in which the leading coefficient is not 1. Suppose we have 6x squared minus 13x plus 5 equals 0. First thing you need to do here, you are going to multiply the leading coefficient with the constant term, which is now going to be 6 multiplied by 5, and this is equal to 30. Now we are going to find the two factors of 30, which when we multiply them together, we get 30, but one added off together, we get negative 13, which is the coefficient of the middle term. Um, I don't want to waste much of your time. The factors are going to be negative 10 and negative 3. Because among the two factors of 30, this is the only group you can multiply together to get positive 30 and add together to get negative 13. So we are going to replace the middle term with these two terms. So we have 6x squared minus 3x, which is this, then minus 10x plus 5 plus the last term. This is equal to 0. Then we are going to factorize in batches the first two and the second two. The first two, among numbers, they have 3 in common, so we have 3. Among the unknown variables, we have x in common. From the first term, if you divide this by this, you are going to obtain 2x minus. Already we have factored 3x out, so we are left with only 1 here. Then you drop your sign, which is minus. Among these two terms, we have 5 in common, so we have 5. Then in the bracket, if you divide negative 10x, negative will cancel negative, having positive sign. Then 10 divided by 5, we have 2. Then x has no x to divide, so we have x. Then 5 divided by negative 5 is going to make it negative 1. The whole of this equal to 0. Now, if you look at these two terms, all have 2x minus 1 in common, which you can factor out. 2x minus 1. From the first term, we have only 3x left. From the second term, we have only minus 5 left. And the whole of this equal to 0. Now we have our two factors, which we are going to set each to be equal to 0. If you set the first one, 2x minus 1, to be equal to 0, if 1 crosses the equality sign, it becomes 2x equal to positive 1. This implies that x equal to 1 divided by 2, so x equal to 1 over 2. Then from the second factor, we have 3x minus 5 equals to 0. 3x will be equal to positive 5 if negative 5 crosses over. And to find x, we are going to divide both sides by 3. And x now equals to 5 over 3. Hence, the root of this quadratic equation are 1 over 2 and 5 over 3. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and do have a nice day.